Welcome to our virtual live panel event in celebration of Hispanic Heritage Month. We are thrilled to have all of you joining us here today and also those of you that are here in the room and online. My name is Dina Lemos Garcia, Human Resource Manager at Corporate Office and the moderator for today. Hispanic Heritage Month, which is observed from September 15th to October 15th, celebrates the rich culture, traditions, and contributions of Hispanic individuals and offers opportunities to deepen our understanding of the history, background, and vital role in shaping our nation's identity. Today, we have an exceptional panel of speakers from regions across the company who will share their unique stories, insights, and experiences. Feel free to engage in the conversation through chat and of course, by submitting your questions. And if we have time at the end, we certainly will address your questions. I'd like to continue the panel event by allowing the panels to introduce themselves. So we'll start with Jose. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Jose Diaz. I am from the uh, Southwest District, previously known as uh, the Western. Uh, I've been a project manager for about 15 years. Uh, and my uh, uh, I guess country of origin is, uh, origin is uh, Mexico. Hola, uh, my name is Denise Cortez. I'm from the Pacific Northwest. I'm uh, working at the North Main, North Main Terminal Project and uh, I am a area superintendent there. Uh, my family, they, uh, my father, he's from Puebla, Mexico and my mom is from Tijuana, Mexico. And um, look forward to uh, answering any questions. Hi, my name is Luis Davalos. Um, I am coming from the uh, North California uh, region, representing, you know, being honored and at the same time proud of representing all the Hispanics on the region, which is NorCal. I've uh, been with the company for almost 20 years. Uh, I've been, you know, moving up slowly but surely from finisher to foreman, uh, general foreman. Now I'm a uh, um, area superintendent and as well helping a lot on the uh, safety department. Like I said, honored and proud to be in this room with you guys. Hi, my name is Michelle Kaiser. I'm manager of supplier diversity in Southern California. I have 12 years with Hensel Phelps and I interned as well. Um, I'm born and raised in Southern California um, and my parents are from Honduras. I also have family in El Salvador. Hi everybody, my name is Fabian Martinez Bonilla. I'm uh, born in Costa Rican uh, right now from the uh, mid-Atlantic uh, region, being in the company 24 years, and I'm a superintendent for Hensel Phelps. Hi, everyone. My name is Abel Bustamante. I'm from Mexico. I work in the 300 district right here in Denver, and I've been with the company around uh, like 13, 14 years. All right, thank you. So we'll start off with our first question. If you could share with us, what does this month mean to you personally? Jose, would you like to start? Sure. Uh, September is, uh, you know, I'm born and raised in Mexico uh, to the age of 16. You know, we celebrated Independence Day. Uh, so to me, September has a, an important value since it's the beginning of uh, Mexico declaring independence from Spain. Uh, and uh, at the same time, uh, that was the first day that I went out on a date with my wife. That, uh, now I've been married for over 30 years. So it has a dual <laughs> meaning to me. One side you clear, declare independence and the other one is a different kind of independence. <laughs> uh, but nevertheless, it has a lot of meaning. Uh, and, and, you know, amazingly enough, I've been in the working for the company for over, over 30 years. And it's amazing the growth that I've seen uh, throughout those years. I remember being the first uh, Hispanic uh, that would walk into a meeting and there would be nobody else there that was Hispanic. I'd be the only one. Uh, and, you know, little by little, uh, you found more more people, not only just, you know, at the entry level, but also at the upper management level. And so, you know, we are the fiber that holds at times this company together in this country. So I'm extremely proud to see that we're making an effort to acknowledge all the contributions that we made as Hispanic, not just to the company, but to the country. And most of the people in this panel, uh, we've just learned that we are first generation. Most of us were Spanish speaking. Uh, so it's kind of good to see that 
we made something for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yes, I agree. I definitely feel that this month for me um, allows me to share a lot of my family traditions with others in addition to learning from others because oftentimes we grow up in different cultures, we grow up in different industries, we grow up in different areas, and while we are all, all alike, we all still have grown up with different traditions that we still carry along with us. So for me, this month is very important for me as well. How about you, Luis? Uh, it's really, really, like Jose was saying, you know, it's, it's really touching when September comes because, you know, it goes back to, I grew up in Mexico. Um, I immigrated to the States when I was 20 years old, so I didn't know anything, any word of English, to be honest. And, uh, you know, September means a lot as it is, when I was still in Mexico, now here is, it touches it even more because, you know, uh, like Jose was saying, you know, we can see the changes that through the through the years with the company, there's, I have seen more people, more Hispanic people moving into and not just men, but women as well, you know, making a huge difference. And, uh, you know, with that, you feel proud of your roots. I feel proud of my roots where I come from. And, uh, but at the same token, it makes me like I have to give, but at the same time, responsibility to show good progress and set the bar to, to the new, new generations, whether they are immigrants, the first generations, or the ones that are being born in, in, in this beautiful country as well. Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you very much. Okay, so our next question, is there something that the company and or your coworkers have done to support or impact your journey here at Hensel Phelps. So Denise, would you like to start? Uh, yes, I can start. So I was an industry hire coming into Hensel Phelps. Um, I've now been with Hensel Phelps for almost five years now. And uh, it was quite intimidating coming to a brand new general contractor, seeing that I had already had seven years past experience with a different company. So it was a kind of a leap of faith that I did, uh, but what kind of really drew me with Hensel Phelps is that um, I was really impressed with not only just the diversity that I saw, um, I wasn't the only girl in the project. Um, so it, it provided that um, it was very refreshing to see and see being able to communicate with others and be able to have a connection right off the bat. Um, one, of, one of the first like construction projects that I had was at Martinez and I worked under Eloy Garcia, who is incredible to work with. And uh, I remember he uh, had he had he had talked to me about what I was going to do, and then offered like, "Hey, let's go do a job walk, and and I show you where the site that you're going to manage." And right when we exited the office, he started talking to me in Spanish, and I was and it felt it, it helped me calm me down and help me feel more at home there. And also with uh, working with the self-performed workers, the, the laborers, the carpenters, engaging with them in Spanish. I'm very shy talking in Spanish, but uh, I feel a lot more comfortable talking to them and them being impressed and, and also supportive of being as well as I'm supportive of them. Um, it, it just made me feel like family around me. So, yeah, I mean, if you really think about it, there's, we spend so much time at work that that's our second family, right? And, you know, sometimes if with that, within that family, you created another family. You know, uh, and again, you know, the company, there's some key uh, peers that, that helped me through, it's been helping me through my career. I can mention Mark Olson, you know, he was, you know, very important in my career because he saw the potentials on me and uh, he kind of pushed me a little. I don't know if you guys are familiar with him, <laughs> Mark Olson, but, uh, you know, it, he gave me the, hey, you can do it. Don't worry about it. We got you. So that support that I felt within the company, the guys that were for me, that were way up here and I'm way down there, you know, um, and I can see not just him, but other guys, they just look at, you know, my strengths and not my weakness because at the time, you know, my English, it wasn't as good. Still, it's not good, but, you know, yeah. it was, yeah. So yeah, I, I have received a lot of support from, from the company. Good, that's great. Yeah, yes. yeah I, I have an experience too of, of feeling, you know, seeing where my strengths and my skills <laughs> and my natural talents are. I was definitely in a point in my career where I was feeling a little bit like a fork in the road at one point, and I had um, Sandra Ichio 
um, was a manager for me when I was an intern and she would just saw me through my career and um, kind of identified the supplier diversity roles good for, for me because she knew me. She had seen me grow up within the company mm -hmm. and had seen me say yes to outreach and community events and things that I naturally gravitated towards. And so it was kind of like me saying yes and then her just seeing me and knowing me and seeing my strengths and um, providing this opportunity for me has been so special and, uh, and it's been a really great fit and like thanks to her and and my managers that I have and Brad Lewis and Chris Chacon and and others and coming back from maternity leave I hired two coordinators so I've I've felt so supported from Hensel Phelps my whole career and every stage of my life. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Abel would you like to add? Yeah I'd like to <clears throat> To add, I remember too when I really came to Hands of Fails a long time ago. I don't speak any English, and you know, probably my boss have a hard time to sell me with all the workers, and I don't speak any English, and I do whatever I want, and know the the task they ask me. And later one day, probably he he sees something on me, you know, and he tell me the name is Nacho. He tell me, hey, do you want to go to the English school? It's like, ah, you know, I almost want to quit. It's in my brain, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's very good. It's, hard to be. it's like, yeah, I go. It's all right. It's like, I'm going to ask one of the superintendents if they pay you to school. Do you go to school and study English? But I don't want you to miss any class. It's like, oh, okay, I go. I only probably don't want to do it, but I do it. <laughs> and after I do it, I remember he he have another conversation later with me. And he tell me, no, you got to keep going. One of these days, probably you'll be a foreman and later you can be someone. It's like, Oh, of course, I barely speak English mm -hmm. now, very little. And you ask me to do something bigger, probably it's never happened. And with the with the years and more years, I get all the all the superintendents, all the foremans. They I don't know how they do, but they support me a lot. They help me every time, and they push me to do one more thing. Hey, can you do this? It's always I like okay, I do it. You guys ask me, I do it. <laughs> I feel like probably I don't make it, but. Uh, Thanks to all the superintendents and I work with them. They always give me a pretty good support. Thank you. Jose, would you like to add? You know, I, I listen to everybody's have their, their uh, you know, moments of inspiration. For me, it was a guy by the name of Bob Pasadeno. Uh He was asking me something and I was trying to figure out how to answer it. And then he goes, look me in the eye and he goes, he goes, I'm asking you a question because I want you to tell me what you think, not what I want to hear. And so to me, that was very empowering because now here's a guy that really treasures and values what I have to say, whether I'm wrong or indifferent, that's really matter. He accepts what I have to say. And ever since then, I mean, I feel confident that I can walk up to him at any situation and say, here's what I'm thinking. How can you help me out? Or if you had a question, I mean, at that time we were trying to do some work in Mexico and uh, everybody was saying there was a good opportunity. I said, Bob, it isn't. There's no money there. We will be the finance bank, so you don't want to go there. So I think that, you know, there's people that are pushing behind you that you just don't see it. Sometimes they come out and say it, sometimes they don't. Pasadena was one that came out and made it right. Good. Thanks, gosh. On, on that note, um, absolutely, I do share all those experiences. Um, people that believe in me. Uh, from the very beginning, um, the, uh, my background uh, starting from picking bananas and packing bananas for a living in Costa Rica when I was 16 uh, to become now superintendent for the company, now six years. Uh, very humble beginnings in Costa Rica, uh, starting as a labor, eight hour uh, labor back then, uh, 24 years ago, uh, going through the ranks. Uh, as an apprentice, um, as a foreman, general foreman, and everything in between. But in every single stage in my career, there was someone on my back, and I had theirs, and they believe in me. Um, one thing I can say is that in the experience that I have in the office, as an office engineer, part of my career um, that I cherish a lot, I did struggle. Um, I did struggle for the very first week a lot, mentally, um, there was someone that saw me struggling there and she came over and gave me the hand that I needed and the words that I needed at that time, uh, words of encouragement. They were very simple. There was nothing extraordinary, but Colleen O'Sullivan, 
came over to me directly, brought me to her office, and just gave me the very kind words of, you're doing great, Fabian. Do not worry about it. You're going to learn the system. Prolog is your friend. <laughs> Prolog is going to do your work a lot more efficient. Just believe in the system. And I take that to heart because very kind words, very direct, but the impact that it had um, is just extraordinary to me. Uh, one thing is that a lot of the people that helped me through my career, uh, they could be just a quick follow up phone call, very random. Fabian, how you doing? Fabian, how is fam? And that's it. We just hang out. But it was those uh, very kind gestures, those uh, those moments that you think that humanity it just comes across, and you, the universe just comes and it helps you. Uh, when I just didn't have any expectations uh, to where, to be where I am right now is just extraordinary. So I do think a lot, a lot of people, very extraordinary people that helped me through my career. That's a great story. So the other, now we're just going to flip it to the other side, right? So now we're going to say, so the quest next question is, so if you could give your younger self advice um, as to what they could do to help them get to maybe where you're at or get to where you started or maybe even here at Hensel Phelps. So think back, some of us have to think back farther, right, than others. <laughs> so think back about your younger self and what advice would you give your younger self today? I, I would say that um, to me it is very direct. Um, I would grab Fabian back then. I would grab him and put him to the side and be like, take the opportunity. Don't say no to the opportunity because you feel you're not ready. Um, Hansel Phelps, I give you a very good opportunity to go ahead and grow. Open the door, don't just don't shut that door. Keep going right through it. They are opening the door for you. Take the opportunity um, because somebody else will take it if it's not you. Uh, we need to fulfill the spot. And for that, I will tell them, take the opportunity. Uh, keep growing your career. Um, the other one would be uh, learn to say no. Uh, work uh, life balance is a new real issue. And people that know me, uh, they know that I will do just about anything for you guys. Not just because that's my job when I was a, a foreman, a general foreman, and even a superintendent. I will go above and beyond what is asked just to make the goal happen. Um, but uh, with that kind of sacrifices, uh, I will tell them balance those sacrifices. 20 years ago, you do not hear about work-life balance. You just don't. So I would tell them, uh, have a real conversation. Is it real necessary that I have to come in on a Sunday all over again for the third Sunday in a row? Can I have a break, please? Uh, but have those real conversations. Uh, not all the time. We have to do this. And the other one would be um, have always everybody's back. Try your best to have their back. Uh, the new up and coming, uh, you know, new hire, field engineer, that doesn't know what he's doing yet. Uh, just help him out, help her out, um, get ahead because that is going to be our future in the company. So just help him out because in, in my mind, every single body that has um, a position has a fellows as in a spot, has a uh, seat in the table and had to go and embrace what they have to say. Um, I would tell, I would tell, just keep doing the same thing that you do. Keep embracing everybody in that table. Uh, keep bringing people together. Don't change a thing. You're going to struggle. Keep through that struggle, uh, but for sure. Yeah, I like one of the things that you said about family and um, trying to figure out your work-life balance. And I think from my culture, family is extremely important. And even though it's like our third cousin, Theo's third cousin, Thea, right? I think we, and they're having a fiesta and we want to go to it, it's still important to us because at the end of the day, we're all really first cousins, right? Or we're, we're sisters and brothers. And so helping us and help our work life understand that family is truly important to our culture. Um, and just for me, again, it's it's important to be able to share that. So for me, as I would help coach my younger self, I would say, make sure that you use your voice and you really explain and express what the, that culture looks like for you. And are we always gonna be able to do that? No, however, there, you know, it is important. We wanna be able to express that. 
and also to overcome that fear. So along with that communication piece is that fear component where uh, it's scary to walk into a place and to use your voice, right? But it's, we need to do that. We need to start doing that. And this is a prime example of us being able to do that. So um, that's for me. Yeah. Now, for me, uh, if I could go back on time, <laughs> uh, one of the things that I will tell the young Luis, uh, education. Because, you know, the one thing that my mom and my aunt taught me when I was younger, uh, they knew I didn't have much education, right? So, but they told me, you have, you have to work hard every time. You have to give 100% every day, whatever it is, whether if you're sweeping floors, whatever, whatever if you're painting a building, you have to give 100%. Whether it's someone someone watching or, watching you or not, but they didn't really. Well, they told me about education, but I didn't really think about that. And that I'm coming now that I move into the uh, area superintendent role. <laughs> I'm struggling a lot, and, and you know my 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 coworkers. They know they they back me back, back me up a lot. They help me out a lot. But I mean education. I mean, like I said, I focus on on on. What I was doing at the time, you know, finishing concrete, making sure that we pork trucks and trucks and trucks and trucks. But I never got or put the time on the side for me to uh, get into the computer, get into, into, into technology, which, you know, to me is a big shot now that I don't have to write notes on paper. <laughs> but I'm getting there. Believe me, I'm getting slowly by surely. You know, I'm just hoping that my, you know, my boss and the rest of the team has enough patience for that too. They've been having enough patience for 20 years. I hope they have another, <laughs> they more use of patience for technology. But I will say, you know, stay within technology because technology, as we all know, is moving really, really, really fast for the last 15, 20 years. Yes. Um, just to add on to that, uh, I, I would probably tell myself to um, just be confident, speak up for yourself. Um, also, don't be afraid to ask for help. Um, I tend to do things on my own a lot and try to figure it out, which is good. Helps me improve my, uh, improve myself. But I feel like uh, I probably could have I pr probably could have saved myself a lot more trouble, a lot more time. But I would have just reached out for help and just asked for advice for other people. Um, but I would also say uh, maybe like educating myself a little bit more, like on investing and saving more like financials. yeah financials uh learning more about that and yeah just utilize the resources around you where there's a lot of people that are rooting for you and uh, they support you they want to help so just take advantage of that yeah definitely definitely you know for me i guess i i i look back at if I could look back and tell my younger self what to do, I think there's three things that I can think of. One is trust yourself, mm -hmm. two, trust the system, and three, uh, be open to the opportunities. And when I say that is, uh, I think that, you know, being a uh, Hispanic, Mexican, or Latino, uh, you know, you kind of tend to hold yourself back uh, because mm -hmm. you want to be in the shadow. I tell people when I first moved into the States, I spoke no English. <laughs> And I didn't want people to be intimidated by me, so uh, I smiled a lot. So my cheekbones will be hurting by the end of the day because I want to make sure that people thought, didn't think that I was a, a threat to them. So, uh, you know, have that confidence in me. The second piece, when I said uh, trust the system, having worked for Henson Files, and we all heard kind of the same thing, you have to trust the people that are trying to help you grow. If someone says, you can do it is because they believe you can go do it. If someone opens the door, it's because the door is open because you have demonstrated that you can make it. Mm -hmm. So you have to take advantage of that, you know. And the last piece of, you know, do things outside of work. I mean, I always thought I need to do my job. I need to work hard because, again, like Luis said, I mean, we we probably have the same type of parents. Uh, and amazingly enough, he's parents are close enough to the town where my parents are from, so <laughs> they probably have the same teaching. Uh, work hard, work hard, work hard. But, you know, working hard only gets you so much. You need to go and find those people that are going to be your mentors. You have to find those people that are going to help you grow within the company. And, you know, when they ask you to go and get out, go outside the company and attend events, 
is because you're creating a name for yourself, not just inside the company, but outside. You'd be surprised how small this industry is. And once you get to know people outside of this circle, you're gonna go places. And so those will be the three things that I definitely can say that I, I, if I could tell myself over, you sure the things you need to go do, uh, you know, now that I'm, I'm not going to say that I'm a better off, but at least I would have had an easy ride to where I'm at today. Yeah, I'll add to that kind of the idea of saying yes to things and just like trying new things. Mm -hmm. And I think travel is really important to my parents and it is something important to me. And so saying yes to opportunities and new things it just kind of opens you up to to more opportunities. Um, and then the other thing I would say is just like to be my authentic self, I think. Um, you know, middle school can be weird, so I had a moment and um, where like someone wasn't nice to me because of who I was and how I was. And, you know, eventually, it's still in middle school, I found like the right group of friends. I just, as I was myself, I gravitated, like the right people gravitated towards me. Um, and it was just authentic, it was real. And so that's when I'm most happy and most confident is when I'm doing things that are um, truly me um, and an easy fit. And um, and then I think something else I would say is just to, like my future self. Um, now that I'm a new mom and I have sisters and they're new moms, um, I think really continuing that culture of the importance of family. I'm telling my future self to continue to spend time with my parents um, and to really nurture that relationship with with my family. Yeah. Yeah. Like for me, it's almost the same thing. You know, when I was younger, probably it's like hard education is work, work and another thing, you thinking whatever you want and never stop and listen, whoever have the experience and tell you, hey, I want you to do something for me or you can you do this so you can be better and probably at those years when I was young, I don't listen, no one, I'm one of the guys and always in my mind is like, whatever you guys tell me, nothing to stop me. But uh, probably it's good for me if I was more listen people and see what they see, then I don't see it. Like it's people to help you. If, if I listen, then probably I'd be probably in a better position now than I don't listen to nobody in those days. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to add one more level to that question. So a lot of you mentioned um, having a mentor, somebody who really believed in you and, and helped you sort of navigate your time and your space at Hensel Phelps. So, if you could give, again, either your younger self or somebody who's starting, let's say somebody that you know is starting at Hensel Phelps tomorrow or next week or even a month ago, and, and they're looking for a mentor, is there some advice that you would share with them um, as somebody coming in to say, here's how I navigated finding a mentor or here's just some steps, maybe not exactly, but what advice would you give somebody about finding or locating a mentor? You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna piggyback off Michelle's point. If you are your true self, people are gonna gravitate to you, and then you will make a relationship or a connection with that individual, and that's the person that's gonna help you grow in your career. If you're forcing an issue and trying to find someone, and not being authentic and being your true self, you're not gonna find the mentor. Everybody here is willing to mentor you. Everybody here is willing to go help you be successful in life, but you need to find the people that you have something in common that will be able to champion you through your career. And granted, you know, you may have a superintendent now that is your mentor, but as you move up with the company, it will be your operations manager. It could be a VP, it could be someone else. I mean, you just need to be able to take that, be yourself so you can be successful. If you're not being true to yourself, you're not gonna find the right mentor. Yeah. I think uh, for a new person, whether it is on craft, you know, labor of this coming to the office, if you're not happy to come to work, it's not your right call. It's not the right call for you. I don't know, you know, because it happens, you know, you have to enjoy what you do. It could be the hardest work out there, but if you find a meaning, if you have, if you have found on that work, the call, you're going to enjoy it. You know, I, I, you know, my original, my, when, when I, before I came to the States, I, I used to work in a foundry. When I came to the States, I, I thought in my head, well, I'm going to find a foundry. And because I know how to, you know, how to melt bronze and aluminum and, and create parts and all that. 
But luckily, I never found a job like that. <laughs> <laughs> I found it on construction. But then again, you know, um, that's what my mom also told me, hey, you need to enjoy what you do. You know, do it as best you can. And not, not only do it the best you can, but try to do it better. And, you know, that's what I will do. If, if you come as, uh, I don't know, a uh, technician on computers, and if it's not really enjoying it, you know, there's maybe you have to kind of try to find something a little different. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, but uh, you really need to enjoy what you do. And, you know, that's going to open up the doors for you even more. When you enjoy it, enjoy it. Enjoy it. Yeah, and, Fine I, enjoyment. yeah and, and I I think also too like when you're in those really big projects too you're going to be around a lot of people and you're you're going to see people that you're going to really look up to and just asking questions as to like like how did they come up with that idea or some just recognizing some ha positive habits that they have like I'm always trying to be very mindful and very observant of those and just have those interactions with the people and just like, hey, like I, I noticed that you're just like really on it with knowing on like, like what do you do to prepare yourself and uh, just being curious, being asking questions. Mm -hmm. And I think just trying to interact with as much people as you can around mm -hmm. you is just going to help you improve yourself. Uh, I, remember, I remember in college, I, I would just blush red, like whenever I had to speak in front of people, I couldn't really talk. Uh, but just with practice and just engaging with people and and forcing yourself to get out of your comfort zone just helps you um, establish those those uh, relationships with people and build those friendships and outside of work too where you hang out and or be in the sports. Um, I it's in one of my projects in Sacramento. I I put together a little little soccer league where we would play pick up soccer with the interns and with a lot of the, anyone that wanted to go, they're more than welcome to show up. So just little things that you take this, try to engage and see if anyone want, is interested. I think that's just taking the first step forward and not just kind of waiting for things to happen. You gotta take action. I think that's very important to do. Yes, yeah, I agree. Yeah, okay, so this next question I think is a fun question. So what did, do you do to keep your culture alive? <laughs> I, I think that <laughs> to me, as a Costa Rican, if you do not know, it's okay to call us Picos. And so it's absolutely a must. If you go to Costa Rica, learn to say Pura Vida. It means pure life. If you're gonna do that, that's fine. But Pura Vida is basically to hype an, an emotion is basically to greet people and also um, is, is a very a good thing to say and to learn if you're gonna go there so you book your trip today please <laughs> <laughs> but as you just know it's a, it's a good thing that i uh, i am where i am because my motherland costa rica uh, is is a place that made a call in 1945 if i remember right um, to make a call to not have a military um, and to give that up in exchange of education and healthcare for everybody. And that's something that I cherish because uh, the values that we have here in the States um, is that we do um, better for others before us. So I do share, uh, share that sentiment. And it's something that uh, as a Costa Rican and uh, enjoy the Caribbean side where I'm from, I just love to have the uh, reggae and the rice and beans and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But it's one of those things that I try to keep that up alive. I am uh, sharing the culture with my wife, Salvadorian, and having the pupusas on a weekend or something. It's just that much more enjoy. Um, and it's something that I, I cherish and share with others that, you know, that wants to go ahead and be part of it as well. Yeah. I think as Hispanics, uh, I think we all know, we're known by, we're loud. <laughs> you know, we kind of loud, you know, you hear the mariachi, yeah! <laughs> you know, it's just, just, it's just one point right there. But I mean, my neighbors, all my neighbors, uh, they kind of know me. Not really, really loud, but I mean, on Saturday and Sunday, they know where I'm out there, you know, because I got the uh, Spanish music on, whether it's mariachi, whether it's cumbia, whether it's salsa. And when they hear that I'm with the weed eater back there or doing some work and there's no music, 
couple of my neighbors, they already have asked more than one time, like, hey, Luis, are you okay? <laughs> and one time I come up, yeah, I'm okay. Why? What's going on? Well, well, we don't hear, we hear you working back there, but we don't hear no music. So, you know, yeah. keeping the music, uh, you know, those, that I, it's part of our culture, you know, being a little loud. Uh, one of the things that uh, I really, I'll try to do pretty often, bring my sisters, they love to come over to my house. Uh, and I, I can see that they feel comfortable. They come in, they come in like their house. And we all evolve around the, around the, the kitchen. That's our point of reunion, you know? And every time that is possible, I'll try to, to come up with a traditional dish that my mom or my grandma used to do. And, you know, go from scratch, you know? And, you know, I not necessarily force them, but I every time they, you know, we, we're in a big group, I say, guys, let's, let's, let's speak Spanish. You know, and especially one that uh, we have, uh, my nephew, we already have, I'm a uncle, grand, uh, grand uncle. So we have our first um, uh, grand nephew, whatever the, you can call it. But that's what I told me, how you guys want to keep the new generation to speak Spanish if we all switch to English? Mm -hmm. They're not, you know, I, got, I kind of was forced to disconnect from Spanish in order to learn English. But I mean, I kind of have to do the opposite now. Yeah, that's what we were talking about with Denise too, where we're, you know, our parents grew up speaking Spanish and so that was in our household and now we're kind of taking on that responsibility of making sure that if it's important to us, like it is for me, um, that our children speak Spanish. So my daughter will be two next month and I'm exclusively speaking in Spanish with her and my husband is a white Texan who knows some Spanish and it's like getting better every day. So for me, how do I keep my culture alive? Definitely the language and making sure that my daughter um, and while my parents speak English I think their Spanish being their first language there's a different comfortability and and so for my daughter to speak Spanish I think that's the ultimate like honor for my parents um, by keeping that alive and, it, and it's been such a special gift that my parents gave me to connect with people wherever I travel we were just in Vancouver last weekend we were like chatting with some kids on the bus in Spanish and it's so cool I love just connecting with people and so to have another language to do it is really special probably like for me the special is on Christmas when we have all the family reunions for six seven days straight before uh, 24 we have every night we come to our houses my sisters my uncles we cook dinner, pray every night, talk in Spanish with all the new generations, but we know how easy it is to they can lose the language if you don't speak with them. And a little bit, they don't, they lose the language. And every time we cook in enchiladas, buñuelos, tamales, all the Mexican tradition foods, and we, we eat them. And on summer, we try to get them at least a couple of weeks or a month if it's possible go back to our town, to our little ranch. It's like a ranch, nothing else, maybe 100 houses so they can live with the animals and they can speak Spanish with the guys in Mexico. And you know, many times they hear the Spanish from Mexico, Spanish, you do like bilingual, you know, they talk like English, Spanish, and then there at least they talk Spanish, Spanish the whole time so they can keep talking Spanish, the new generation, generations. Can we take over? <laughs> you know, I, I, we have a couple of traditions. One of them, I guess, obviously, uh, you know, 12 days before Christmas, uh, we have posadas, which is a celebration uh, before the uh, birth of Jesus. Uh, the other one that we have is, uh, so we, we throw parties at the house, uh, invite the neighbors, so they think that we're crazy, but, you know, it's free beer, free tamales, free vino, I know there's food, so they're always welcome when to come. When is your next party? <laughs> Uh, but uh, the one that our kids uh, that we started since they were since they were born, uh, we celebrated the arrival of the three kings. That's when, if you're Christian, that's when the uh, three queen kings brought gifts to Jesus. So for us, we wait till January 6th to give them the biggest gift. And uh, you know, so that's the tradition that we carry for years. And even now, if one of them is out of the house, we still send him a, a gift. Uh, but the interesting thing is that you know they will go back to school. And then they will talk about 
what they got for Christmas. And my kids go, oh, I got this for Christmas, but I got this for the Three Kings. I'm like, what? How come the Three Kings don't come to my house? My house is not Mexican, so there you have it. <laughs> so, but I, I think language is important. Uh, I, I'm, I'm first generation, and I think my struggle was, as I stated earlier before, uh, I smile a lot because language was not my first, English was not my first language. So I did not want my kids to suffer through that. So I was the opposite. I taught my kids to speak English because I didn't want them to be in my boat. Uh, fortunately enough, my wife is the opposite. Uh, she grew up with parents that spoke Spanish uh, and she learned Spanish at the house, but English at school. And, uh, and so our kids got to be bilingual through her more than to me. And uh, both of them are, I would say they're fluent, but both of them will get, will get the point across. And uh, so I'm very proud of the fact that they, they engage and they, they actually embrace the language and they embrace their culture. Yeah, and for me, uh, I mean, just trying to continue practicing uh, my Spanish that way I don't forget it because my parents are the main people that I talk to in Spanish all the time. Uh, but I try to practice through uh, singing music in my car. Uh, I do car karaoke all the time, especially since I drive on my own, just full blast. Um, also, just um, eating eating Mexican food, especially if, or making making Mexican food um, if I ever feel homesick. Um, but like uh, watching films in, in Spanish as well, just trying to keep that alive. And uh, it, because it's such a beautiful language, it's very poetic. Uh, there's a lot of emotion behind it, and uh, you make you make really great connections with people. So it's something that I don't want to lose and want to continue to keep alive. Yeah, I definitely resonate with all of your traditions as well. So for me, um, the traditions that I like to keep and carry are um, tamale making. So we used to, of course, make it always around Christmas. Um, but then we beg our family, can we do it? We know it's October, but can we do it in October? <laughs> can we do it? In, and so for us, it's going to my grandma's house and of course the kitchen is where everybody stays and and sits and chats even if there's 40 of us we all kind of pack into the kitchen to make tamales and that's important for us um, and then the other thing is the spanish music so i am not bilingual by any means however i can shout out selena's song all day long <laughs> yeah. um, and for uh, for me when i turn on the spanish music it's really because that's the day that we're going to clean the house so yeah. if, <laughs> if that's blasting in the morning today's the day we're going to clean the house and i've just inherited that from from my mom and my grandmother and that's just kind of what they've done too so yep yeah, anyone else want to add anything else before we move on to the next one? Uh, I think language for sure. Yep. Um, and uh, just like some of you mentioned, um, having our kids learn uh, that extra language open that much more at doors. Um, I would also encourage, going off topic a bit, but um, <laughs> encourage uh, somebody else to also do the same. Learn a little bit of Spanish. Uh, you may be uh, rewarded uh, with uh, many great things. Uh, there is a lot to go and learn in uh, from someone uh, language for sure and that may be a good step in the right direction uh, that embracing that extra person in your crew that you may not understand fully at times and that may be a, a helping hand a challenge that person that may have uh, some issues with with you know english um, help them uh, and encourage them to go and take on writing an aha or translating on a uh, safety meeting and so and sorts and come some capacities and help them out because those little gestures goes a long way for a lot of people. Okay. All right. So we have a question from the audience. So our first question is, what do you enjoy most about your role? Oh, oh I can answer that. Um, so I kind of touched on the fact that I feel like this role in supplier diversity is very true to my natural like strengths and talents and I kind of talked about how I value Spanish and as a way to connect with other people. So I feel very lucky to be in this position to be an ambassador for Hensel Phelps, a company that I very much believe in. And I think everyone that works at Hensel Phelps is amazing. I think the leadership is amazing. Um, so I'm very proud to be in the role that I'm in. And I think it's a really great fit. And I think it's a testament to Hensel Phelps um, that I'm in it and that it's such a good fit. 
uh, so another thing I get to I value about my job. So my job, I work with small diverse businesses and my parents are actually small diverse business owners. So it's such a natural fit where I get to see that perspective. And then of course the large contractors perspective. And um, so that's really cool. And then other, another side of my job is workforce development. Um, and we have a lot of unions in Southern California. So I get to help people um, get a career and change their life and their family's life and um, get a health care and retirement plan. Um, all of that is really, really cool and exciting for me. So I'm yeah, very happy to be in this role. I was going to add to that uh, as an area superintendent, um, it's very rewarding for me and it's also very uh, I do a lot that I'm empowered a lot uh, to make a lot of great decisions and also take on a leadership role. Um, something I didn't quite felt comfortable at first, but um, going through that challenge and also having a great a great team around me that's constantly pushing me forward and um, people around me, superintendents and, and other area superintendents who I can really go to to seek advice and get, 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 get their thoughts on what whether hey like I'm thinking about doing this like what, what are your thoughts what have you done in the past it, it's really great to know that I have such a great supporting team that I can go to and ask for advice and just kind of if I'm having second guesses uh, I can feel comfortable and have that conversation and um, it's really great to see it's a, re it's a rewarding <coughs> experience to see that you see little milestones that you achieve on the project you see it physically happen and it's 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 great to know that I was part of that and and um, also with the scheduling, get putting those activities together and and kind of orchestrating all the uh, all the trade partners to work together, try and be proactive. It's uh, it, it's a really fun experience. It can be challenging and uh, and long, but I think uh, at the end of the day, it's always really really re rewarding. And sometimes after I see the 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 building putting get, getting put together i'm like that you know what that was actually a really great experience all that hard work and and uh the sweat and tears um, that are that i put behind it 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 came to this and it's really great to see that um uh, i think my parents would be pretty proud yeah now you can point at it too and be like i helped to build that <laughs> oh yeah no, it's, it's, it's a very rewarding experience when you yeah. pass by those projects of the all the challenges that you went through not everyone's going to know about them but you know that it was it was an accomplishment and it's serving a purpose a higher purpose to help people around you one of the things that i really enjoy uh with my the role that i, I play now is that uh you know i go back to where i started on in the industry when i didn't know any english at all and there you know there's still a lot of people uh on our industry that they're not bilingual they're not necessarily that i am a bilingual 100 percent, but you know i i'm way better than when when i started and i can make the difference because a lot of times guys don't know better uh, they're new to the industry and uh you know i feel really good and feel it feels really uh, when you go out there and you start talking to a person in Spanish and oh, I, I wasn't meaning to do this, you know, I, I was trying to explain them, you know, and, and point them in the right direction. So I feel like in, on, on that on that note, I kind of making a difference on the Hispanic community on our projects. They are not bilingual. I mean, and that's rewarding, yeah. I'm being in the industry. I mean, one of the things that I think everybody can be proud of it is pointing <coughs> at something and said, "That's I did that. Oh, I built that." Mm -hmm. And you can ask my kids all the projects that I've done because I've driven them by and said, "Dad did that. <laughs> yeah, we built that. Dad did this." Uh, but at the same time, I mean, when I think I thought of work, the flexibility that that my position that allowed me to do. I mean, it gives me the opportunity to go and mentor high school students. Uh, it helps me mentor the young, uh, new graduates from the universities. So, you know, you're opening the door because, you know, you, we talk about such a true statement of find your replacement and create your replacement. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, by, by finding the individuals to go help them grow, uh, they'll take the company to the next level and, and reinsure that we will be here and the company will be here, you know, for the centennial, which is in 2037. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think I value that, you know, having a job is great, uh, doing what I do is great. I think empowering those people to make decisions and be someone against the else is probably very important. 
like for me, it's something that I be between in the field and the office now. You know, I start working a little bit in the office, a lot on the field, and I see all the traits, all the problems. I see all the problems in the office and all the solutions, everything, and all the guys have a lot of questions. And with the little information I get from here and there, I can help all the trades on the field and all the new FEs. I, you know, it's something that I love it. And they come with sometimes from college and they they come from college with not too much experience in the field and help them all the time. They have a lot of questions and they they don't have sometimes somebody else, you know, they have the superintendent and tell them what they do. but. Uh, they are afraid to talk to the superintendents, but they say, oh, this is my boss. If I ask something to him, maybe he think I don't know anything. <laughs> and they come probably through me, and they say, oh, this, this guy is in the field. Maybe he don't know, but at least he don't yell at me if I ask a <laughs> question to this guy. You know anything I ask, probably he don't know, but he helped me. <laughs> and it's something that I like it. And they always come and ask a lot of questions. And, and me too, you know, I ask more probably than them, but uh, they come <laughs> and ask me a lot of questions too. Uh, to me, is uh, area superintendent is very rewarding experience uh, position. Uh, obviously, with the uh, assistant of my upper management, uh, having that backup they gave me every single day out there is essential. Um, the fact that I'm there to mentor the new generation of builders, the new field engineer, the new office engineer, is absolutely exactly what I want to do. Just help them break through the struggles that I, I did myself and went through. I uh, want to be there to help them and grow. And I always tell them uh, it will make my day if you become my boss. It's just that extra gratification that, oh my God, I did my job that extra more better. And it's just very fun. And I try to make uh, the uh, the trade partners to be very comfortable with us to come over and help me get through this and trying to become that bridge in between as it's starting in the office to make it happen in the field and making it happen. But um, I always go around always saying that good morning and good, the good afternoons, always making the effort that you will remember me. I am your man. You come to me. I'll go ahead and find a solution. I will help you, whatever you need. But it might be the other way around. That trade partner is the specialist, the professional at what they do. So I go around my way of saying, do you mind helping me understand this? Because I genuinely do not understand. And, and having that, that, that sit in the table when it comes down to coordination meetings is very powerful. Um, I, and I do share my background. Again, packing bananas background has nothing to do with construction. And here I am. Hansel Falls gave me that. And it's something is very empowering to me, and I share that with great pride, um, and with the trade partners and some other designers as well. And, um, and I'm there because NCFL is entrusting me to do this and what I'm doing right now, and I'm loving it. Yeah, that's so awesome to hear from everyone. Okay, here's our next question from us, one of our viewers. How can colleagues help celebrate your culture year round? Get a taco truck. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we won't get offended. We won't, we won't get offended. Get a taco truck. <laughs> oh, good. I think, you know, understanding our culture. You know, yes. we are very family oriented. Mm -hmm. We are a very closed unity. You know, people say, I need to take the month of December off to go to Mexico. And you kind of go, why? Because they, that's when most Mexicans get together and party. <laughs> Remember talking about the 12 days? So we as Americans don't quite understand that. And now I say Americans because I have lived here longer than I lived in Mexico. So therefore, I'm now a Mexican American. Uh, but family is very important to us. You know, most people think that Cinco de Mayo is, you know, Independence Day. When it is not. It's just a battle that Mexico won against the French, but that's it. Nothing more than that. But yet, the the, the misnotion of that being a, an important day to Mexico, it is, but it is not celebrating independence. So I think embracing us, trying to understand who we are and where we come from makes a world of difference. I mean, again, we are a fiber that makes this company so great. 
you know, you got people from El Salvador, you got people from Puerto Rico, I mean, Costa Rica, you got people from Mexico, you got people from Honduras. I mean, we all make this wonderful company what it is. And so if you embrace us without any bias, then we'll be able to open up to you and then we will be able to have an honest conversation and an honest understanding of who we are, not just as Hispanics or Latinos, but who, who we are as a company and as Americans. This is a great step towards that. I mean, you know, like I said, it's, it's uh, recognizing, you know, at, at this level, it's, you know, it's going to make a huge difference on all of us. It already is, you know, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did you want to add something to that, Fabian? Um, I was gonna say, um, and I do share that sentiment. Um, try to understand us. I know there is a, the language barrier at times. Um, like, like I was saying before, help yourself learn a word a day, and that will go a great deal um, when it comes down to communication. Um, and again, giving giving the challenge to someone who's uh, having some trouble, uh, help them out. Um, but for sure. Uh, understanding us that we are all different, have all these things to go ahead and share and provide. It just makes us that more stronger and the building together is part of what we are. Yeah, I would add on to that too and piggyback with what you all said. And so when we talk about understanding us, um, we are still individuals. So even though we represent the Hispanic Latinx population, we all still carry our individual components and strengths and traditions that we bring to the table. So while understanding the culture, it's understanding us as an individual, right? Because we all are still different in, in various ways. So I agree. I think that um, just appreciating that some of us may celebrate different things and different um, historical components and traditions, um, even though we all might look alike and maybe we all talk alike, but we all still are very individual in our own person. And so just recognizing that I think is important as well. Yeah, I agree. I actually talked to my sisters about the panels. Like, these are some of the questions. Like, how would you answer? And they, you know, we didn't have exact answers, even though we grew up in the same place, in the same house, um, and some of the same traditions. I think we're experiencing the world in different ways. Even my older sister has two kids, and um, they're not speaking as much Spanish. It's like, that's really important to me personally. Um, and so I think it is a good point that while we do have a lot of shared experiences, we're individuals, and the way that we experience life is different. Yep. yep. Okay, we have time for one more question. So what is your perspective on the opportunities provided through DEIC and building together? Say that again. <laughs> Can you hear the question? Yeah. yeah. This, yeah. Uh, what is your perspective on the opportunities provided through DEIC and building together? I think it's a voice. Yeah. Each one of us has a voice, um, don't matter your background, doesn't matter who you are, who, how you identify yourself, you have a voice. And Hensefeld is providing you that seat in the table again. Um, is that the exceptionalism that Hensefeld brings uh, to the construction industry and that one that I, uh, I'm an HP for life, it don't matter. <laughs> um, <laughs> I can tell you this is, is very rewarding. Uh, having um, upper management always open those doors even more wider every single time we make changes to provide for everybody and have everybody be included as well. Thank you. So as we wrap up this remarkable event celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month, I want to extend my heartfelt gratitude for the wonderful panelists. We've had the privilege of hearing captive stories, gaining insights and deepening our appreciation for the diverse and vibrant Hispanic heritage. Let's carry on the spirit of the celebration forward in our workplace and beyond, embracing the values of inclusion, respect and understanding. Together, we can continue to build a stronger and more inclusive community. Remember, Hispanic Heritage Month is not just about dedicating a few weeks to celebrate, but a reminder that our shared cultural tapestry is year round. Let's keep the conversation going, keep learning, keep celebrating the unique journeys that make us who we are. Thank you once again for joining us and have a great day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.